Mixing beats can be time consuming. You're wasting more time on mixing than on actually composing the beats. When an artist buys your beat, it means they like it for the melodies, the arrangement, the drums. Try to leave the mixing more for the mixing engineer that the artist is gonna work with and focus more on actually creating the beats. But on the other hand, you need to make sure your beats sound hard, loud, and most importantly, balanced. And that's exactly what you'll learn today. Leveling or balancing the mix. Before you do that, you need to understand signal flow. It's the way that the audio flows through FL Studio. It starts with a pattern in the channel rack, then you'll assign that pattern to a mixer track, and then the mixer, the sound will go through the effects rack. Then it travels to the fader, and from here, it will flow to the master. So when you adjust the volume in the channel rack, you're adjusting it before the effects are applied. That's why in most cases, it's better to use the faders for leveling instead. The only thing you need to make sure of is that the sound isn't too loud or clipping when it's going to a mixer track. In that case, you can turn it down a little bit the channel rack. However, I actually use these knobs when I'm creating the beat, you know, to quickly level the sounds. But once I start mixing, I reset all the volumes and you can simply do that by holding Alt and clicking them. And there you go, that's signal flow. Oh, and by the way, to send all of these to a mixer track at once, select them like this and hit Ctrl L on your keyboard. Quick shortcut. And now let's get to actually leveling the sounds. Disable all the mixer tracks and start with the melody. Or you can just right click the melody track. Most of the time with beats like these, I like it around minus 10 to minus 16 decibels. Take this with a grain of salt because it's different for every beat, every melody and especially when you're making other genres. Same thing for the other instruments. Now in trap and hip-hop the kick, 808, snare are usually the loudest parts. Again this can vary but I really want my kick to punch through. You know what, more tricks on that later but first make sure it already punches through the mix by balancing it. Another thing that will really help with that is spreading out elements that are living in the mid to high frequency range. You know, to create more space. For that you can use the panner. This will move the sound to the left or the right. Because you're spreading out these elements, it will create more room in the center of your beat. So imagine your mix is done, you play it back and it sounds awesome. But then to check the mix, you play it in your car. And suddenly everything sounds muddy. So you try it on some ear pots. And now it sounds way too sharp. Believe me, I can relate. Which is why the next trick absolutely changed my life. Guys, calibrate your headphones and speakers. Ever since I did this, my mixes sound great everywhere. On phones, MacBooks, speakers, cars, everything. The tool I use for that is called Sound ID reference. It ensures perfect translation so that you can create music that sounds great everywhere. But how does it work? It basically measures the frequency response of your room and speakers. Then with that information it will create a calibration profile. For headphones all you need to do is find your compatible headphone and it will apply a pre-made profile to it. The application comes as a standalone or as a plugin inside FL. If you want to calibrate your speakers make sure to use the sound ID reference microphone. You can actually use any measurement mic as long as it has on directional capability. Then all you need to do is start the setup. It's incredibly easy, just follow the steps and once you're done, your calibration profile will be ready and you can apply it to your speakers. Now with the toggle on the bottom right, you can turn the calibration on or off. Then the custom target feature allows you to create adjustments to your calibration curve. Let's say you only want the lows to be calibrated, then just make that selection. The thing I love most about this app is that you can simulate how your mix will sound in other locations, such as your car, headphones, laptop or your smartphone smartphone. Thanks to Sound ID Reference, I can finally trust my mixes. So guys, definitely take advantage of this. You can try it out for 21 days completely for free. Go check it out down below. Next trick, sometimes your mix is still a little muddy. Try turning the kick and 808 to mono. That will put it exactly in the center, so it won't interfere with the sounds at the side. You can also split the 808 into three parts, the lows, the mids and the highs. That way you can put the lows in mono without touching the mids and the highs. You can even play with some effects on the higher frequencies to make your 808 more unique. But that's a topic for another video, so let me know if you want to hear about that. The next one is a trick you should already know by now. Here you can see an EQ on the melody and another EQ on the 
the 808. It sounds okay, but the lows of the melody are taking up space for the 808. aren't really important because we only want the 808 to punch in the low end. To fix that, simply cut away the lows of the melody. Make sure you don't cut off too much because that will kill the body of the melody. Now if you're using an 808 and kick together, you might want to sidechain them. But how do you do it? When you sidechain a kick to an 808, the 808 will duck every time the kick plays. This will make sure the kick punches through. Now how do you do this? It's pretty simple. Make sure your kick and 808 are sent to a mixer track. Then select the kick, go to the 808 mixer and right click on the button below the fader. Select sidechain to this track. Then select the 808 mixer and go to the effects track. Find the fruity limiter. Once it's open, head over to the compressor. In the sidechain menu, select your kick. Now go to the threshold knob and turn it all the way to the left. Turn the ratio all the way to the right and increase the attack. Decrease the release just a little bit and now you can hear the kick pumping through the 808. But this is way too intense. To fix that, increase the threshold again. That will already sound better. Next you want to tweak the sidechain with the attack and release knobs. That sounds awesome. But if you want to have some free plugins that will make your beats even better, go check it out right here. You'll be happy. I'll guarantee you. Goodbye.